Thanks for checking out Guardians of the Green Beret.com. Today we present Dan Brock or Brock, however you say his last name. We have two audio recordings. One, our second phone call with him. We lost the first one where he admitted everything that he was a total fraud. The second one, we touched base on it quickly again, but you could see uh, he admits to being a fraud. And then the second audio is from a Vietnam Veterans News where he goes in depth about his claims and stuff like that before he was busted as a fraud. Then uh, check out the rest of the data we have on him and the extensive email dialogue on our website where he was still claiming to be legit and sent us two documents to prove he's legit, a fake DD-214 and a fake DD-215 at guardiansofthegreenbray.com. Also, a second edit in this initial phone conversation with him, you'll see us reference an individual that supposedly worked for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, and we discussed the fact that we are going to try and make contact with him. We did indeed make contact with him, and he denied that he ever emailed us whatsoever on Dan's behalf. So we are under the firm belief that was Dan creating a fake email, and he also created fake responses in the article of Vietnam Veteran News that we have on our website. Hello. Hey, is this Dan Brote again? Yeah. Yes, hey, it is. I forget, after you, uh, you know, admitted all was a lie, you actually told me those MOSs. Can you, I can't find that sheet. Can you tell me what those were again? Sure. They're 26 Victor and 32 Echo. Yeah, but what were they? Microwave? Uh, 32 Echo is fixed plant carrier and 26 Victor is microwave radio repair. Okay. The the two follow up questions. After you said you were not a ranger, you're not, you know not airborne, not SF, none of that above. A guy reached out to us from the Vietnam Veterans News where you did a podcast. Probably. Um, well, you did a pod. Yeah. You did a podcast, and I'll, I'll follow up with one more question after this, uh, because you and I both know all those claims were fake, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. My, my question is in the comments section, which which I have saved. I think there was four people, a lieutenant colonel, that said you were a great guy, where he served with you in Fifth Group SOG, etc. Did you make like three or four different emails for people to? No, I. No, I did not. Those. I, the only one that I know of. For sure is the one from Jana, the very first comment. The other comments, I know nothing about any of those people. Okay, because I also cre uh, contacted Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. You and I both know who supposedly emailed us saying that they checked their records and you're legit. Well, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, uh, remember you, they said they never verify anybody's records they ask others to do it such as our organization and uh, they actually contacted that individual that emailed us and they said first that's not our email and he would never have gone on record that's not the type of individual he is so they're actually putting us in contact with that individual I'm gonna ask you flat out now's your time to step up was that a fake email uh, no, not a fake email at all. That's the email I got from this individual a long time ago when he was part of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. So, so no, but no, it's not a long time ago. Uh, he just emailed us last week. So you're saying that the guy actually emailed us from a VV mf at gmail.com which the vietnam veterans memorial fund said that is not their email there's no reason for him to have created an email using that when he would have had a vietnam veteran memorial fund.org email when he worked with them and they reached out to him and he says he never emailed us 
So is he well, lying? I, I, you, you've lied about being a Green Beret. You've lied about Ranger. You've lied about Airborne. You lied about Together We Serve creating it, uh, that fake profile. You've lied about the ASA. You, you've lied about almost everything. My guessing, those four comments on Vietnam veterans, he knew you were a fraud then. He called a, a Ranger Battalion and found out you never gradu graduated Ranger School. Uh, you lied about your DD-214. You lied about the DD-215. I'm thinking you created those four comments on the Vietnam Veterans News. And I'm only saying that because those guys called you by name. Those guys all said 5th Group SOG, which it would actually be 5th Special Forces Group and then MACV SOG. It not, it's not really 5th Group SOG. And all of them referred to that same mistake and that's what you used to describe your unit so I'm a firm believer you created those fake profiles to make yourself look more legit and when I talked to the supervisor at Vietnam Veterans and Memorial Fund he remembered both of you guys and he was dead sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that the guy did not send that email and that's so much so that he's reaching out to him and putting us in contact with him yeah, I realize that. Stop, stop for a minute and let and let me interject here. Now, I only reached out to to uh, the person because at the time I started the Faces Never Forgotten program. When I got in got involved in that, this was ten years ago or so, and he and he was employed in that. Yeah. Now. When I tried to contact him again, I he had left the group, yep. and I dealt with a person named Colonel Steve. He yep. was gone by then. Now I can't help that he he has a, a Gmail account if he wasn't employed there at the time. But Steve, I'm I'm sorry about that, and I don't want to throw him under the bus. But I can only state what well what ha is how did you what make happened at the time? But. How did you make contact with him? By email. Well, he responded by, by meant emails when I was searching for these pictures. Yeah, but what I'm saying is when you knew you were going to be exposed as a fraud, reached out on his own from a Gmail account, which to make it look more official, it said VVMF at gmail.com, which VVMF says that is not an email they would have. So he would not create that email after he left the company. And he reached out to us in real time where you pretended you were still in dialogue with him because I have the email that you said you told, but please don't email him again. I don't want, I, I told him not to get involved or whatever. So uh, I'm gonna we're, we're gonna be put in contact with him, and he's gonna say I haven't talked to that guy in years, you know. Well, that's okay, Steve. I I I, I can't defend or deny or do any. I can only tell you what I got. In fact, I'm looking at when I go home. I can tell you that there are two people that are claiming to be from your organization have sent me very nasty emails. No, they haven't. No, they have not. That's not how we roll. I, That's not how we well, roll. But it's, it, listen, I can forward you the emails anytime you want. Well, it, you know, this, this is disturbing enough. Well, it's disturbing that you're a fraud and a liar, and I was trying to be yeah, very professional. Right. I was trying to be very professional with you, but you've gone out of your way, to, that Vietnam Veterans News, to create those profiles the same mistakes. Those are the same mistakes you had on your DD-214 pretending to have known you and served with you. The same mistakes. Those three different people don't make the same mistakes. Those were profiles you created. So I know you got the talent and the ability to fake, create fake profiles to pretend they knew you. So I can only assume why would a guy leave Veterans Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund and then all of a sudden do an email pretending to still be associated with that using the vvmf.gmail. That's you don't create 
when you leave a company, you don't still use that company's abbreviation in a Gmail account. You create your own Gmail account. So I'm going to reach back out to the v uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Yet again, I talked to the guy, the second level supervisor, whatever, that knew you yesterday. And he was the one that said, I'm not so sure about Dan. Now, if you want me to admit to it, I'll admit to it to keep this, the, this person out of here. Uh, but otherwise, no, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Well, you already brought him into it by creating that fake uh, account. So, all right, we'll talk at you later. And now the Vietnam Veterans News interview. Dan, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Fine. Fine, Mac. Well, Pleasure thank, to be here. Well, thank you so much for coming, and I can hardly wait to hear your story about the pictures. But before we do that, I'd like to hear about your pedigree as a Vietnam veteran. Can you tell us a little bit about your Vietnam service first, like you know, how you got in the whatever service you're in and what you did over in Vietnam? Sure. I was draft. I was in college in 1967. I was a sophomore in college, and towards the end of my first semester, I got my initial uh, greetings from Uncle Sam notice in the mail. And of course, I fought that because I was indeed a student, ending my uh, first semester of my sophomore year. But they were uh, very diligent in trying to draft me again, so after the, the third try, they did draft me uh, my second semester uh, in college. In, so in the, April the, the college deferment did not help you in this case? No, not in this case at all. They must have, your, draft, your draft board must have been desperate. Well, not only was my draft board desperate, the woman running the draft board and uh, had something against me. Uh, her son and I went to private school, high school together, but for some reason she didn't like me. In fact, she didn't like most of the, the guys in the town that I grew up of, Gaithersburg, uh -oh. anyway. So. Sounds, like, sounds like Nurse Ratchet was in charge of the... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway, she, she might, who knows, she might have done you a favor. Uh, oh, yeah. So you, had, you, you you were drafted and you went in, then what happened? Well, in uh, April of 1967... I got my draft notice and was inducted, but in the meantime, I had an uncle who was one of the last horse cavalry soldiers with 1st Cavalry during World War II. When my mother told him that I had been drafted and would be sent to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, he came down and sat down with me and sort of mentored me on what to expect, both in basic training and what was ahead of me. He had a suggestion that since I was drafted, most likely I would be going into an infantry unit because I had no other skill set to have them put me anywhere else, not to say that they wouldn't, but at the time, 1967, uh, Vietnam was escalating very rapidly. So he suggested that I enlist for an additional year for a three-year active duty commitment and ask for ranger training. Now, ranger training, of course, is based on the fact that you can pass both the physical and the mental tests that are required in order to get into ranger training. Luckily, I did that. So I enlisted for that extra year, finished my basic training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, in June of 1967, and in between, and I, I was also accepted at uh, the Ranger School Training School in Fort Benning, Georgia. But there was a delay in between the time that I left basic training and the time my Ranger class was due to start at Fort Benning. So what I did was I had enough time to go to Airborne Training School since it was right next door to my basic training unit. It was nothing but a 500-foot walk over to the center for airborne training. So I took my airborne training. There was also a couple months in between the finish of airborne training and the start of my ranger class. So my CO sent me to some NCO schools and some reconnaissance training schools. Uh, one was at... Fort Huachuca, Arizona. The other one was at the Jungle Warfare Center at Fort Sherman in Panama. 
Uh, after I finished those, I reported to Fort Benning, Georgia to start my ranger training school. It sounds like when you started ranger training, you were already qualified. Well, like I said, I was lucky enough to be in an environment that they always tell you, don't volunteer. I volunteered, and it got to the point where my NCOs and my drill instructors said, well, when I ask for a volunteer, I know Dan's going to to volunteer, so I'm not going to accept him as a volunteer, because most of the time it was crap jobs. But then they got the mindset, well, this, this guy is interested in experience. So I sort of had mentors on the way, both in drill instructions, uh, company commanders, uh, platoon sergeants, that sort of said, well, this man seems generally interested in learning a skill set that he's going to need to know when he is faced with what is to come in Vietnam. So that helped out a lot, so provided me with some direction. You went to a ranger school. I assume you breezed through there. Well, I, I don't know about breezed. I, I got through it, put it that way. I know anybody who's been anywhere near the ranger school and the ranger course, they know what you went through and how tough it is. Well, not only that, the time of year, which was August, was a terrible time to be in Georgia. The heat and the humidity was just astronomical, and dehydration levels were astronomical. Well, it was probably no fun in the uh, Fort Benning phase either. Oh, no, no. No, not at all. But anyway, you made it through there. Now, did you, did you go straight to Vietnam after Ranger School? No. I went back to Jungle Warfare Center at Fort Sherman in, in Panama for some additional uh, reconnaissance training. When I finished that uh, in December, I then left the day after Christmas for Vietnam. And I arrived in San Francisco for my flight out to South Vietnam. At, at the same time, I forgot to mention that I also requested assignment to the 1st Cavalry Division, and that was accepted. Wow, well, I bet your uncle was got a kick out of that. Oh, yes. He was very happy, and he was very proud of the fact I would become one of the air mobile horsemen, <laughs> so to speak, while he was the last of the horse cavalry physically. In fact, I have a picture of him in his dress uniform on a horse, with the 1st Cavalry Division. It was going to be the first in the family to be an Air Cavalry soldier. Well, you were lucky because the 1st Cav continued the proud tradition in the air over in Vietnam. I was always impressed with what they did over there. Oh, yes, definitely. So uh, what was your job with the 1st Cav? When I first came to the 1st Cavalry in the area of Pleiku, Central Highlands, and Two Corps, I was a line soldier, just a regular infantryman. But my platoon leader, the lieutenant at the time, saw that I had some reconnaissance background, and he also noticed that I was very good with maps and compasses and, and orienteering. So he asked me if I would be interested in getting into long-range reconnaissance patrolling, and I said, yes, I would. So he put me into long-range reconnaissance patrol, and of course our duty was to go out for extended periods of time to gather reconnaissance to give back to the S3 intelligence officer and my local commander for operations that the regular front-line infantrymen would go out and handle the situation. Now, uh, just for the cab guys who are listening, what unit were you in with the I was first with cab? the first First of the 7th. First of the 7th. Good first out. Battalion, 7th Regiment. The old Custer Regiment. Right, right. They were they were a uh, good outfit over there in Vietnam. Oh, excellent outfit. Very great, leader, great leadership. So you got, yeah, my, they put and, you in the long-range reconnaissance, and is that what you did for the rest of your tour? Yes. My first tour, that is exactly what I did for the rest of my tour. That was had to be an adventure, but... Now, we may talk about that later, but we want to get, there's got something else more exciting I want to talk about. After you finished your time in Vietnam, now you said you signed up for three years, then you had to commit to an additional year for that other school you went to. When you got back, what did you do in the Army? Well, when I got back, I also, uh, they interviewed me at the end of my first tour and asked me if I was 
interested in taking a TDY assignment with the 5th Special Forces Studies and Observation Group. And I said, yes, I would be interested in that. So I spent an additional year. I extended my first tour duty an additional year and spent the next year with the 5th Special Forces Studies and Observation Group. Did my tour, my, my tour now not my enlistment. Right, right. Yeah. How long I, were you in Vietnam total? Two years total. Okay, 19, two December tours. of 1967 to December of 1969. So one year with the 1st Cav as a alert, as they called them, and yes, then one year exactly. with the Special Forces. Yes. Man, yes. you had a very interesting time over there, I yes. can imagine. I was not only a team member with the 5th Special Forces, but I was also a team leader. Uh, after the two years in Vietnam, did you have a break in between, or did you just stay over there for two, four years? I just years? stayed over there. Oh, I, well, I guess they, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to yeah, stay. I, I didn't want to lose my edge, so to speak. Right, right. Now, where so were you I, with the Special Forces? Well, in I Corps, along the Laotian... Somewhere north. up north, you can't mention. Yes, <laughs> I was in nor up north, yeah. Okay, enough said about that. Now, with that stellar career that you had over in Vietnam, when you came back, did you stay in the military, or when your term was up, get out? No, I had a couple months left before my enlistment was up. I spent those couple of months at the Pentagon doing what they call after-action briefing. They would ask me questions about different operations that I was involved in. What transpired between S3, which is the intelligence section of the Army, and my operations. And I would report as to what was going on. Then my active duty enlistment was over, and I decided when my enlistment was over that I would return to college. So I returned to college to finish my education. Now head to guardiansofthegreenberry.com to see all the data we have on hand.